What's up, people? What's up, people? It's your boy, MM2K of PNTS Network, Hard Knock Digital Culture, you name it, CGTV, Triple B, Cloud Dosage, you name it. We're part of it. <laughs> oh, let me fix that graphic. We're back again with another episode of the show that we call PS Pep Rally. And I, and, and, and I do have to say myself that after today... Let me see, can I fix this audio visualizer? Where's it at? Uh, after today, we might need a, we, we, we might need a little pepping. We might need a little pepping because uh, <laughs> some news has been dropped today that I, I, I think is going to dishearten um, some PlayStation gamers. Not all of them. I won't even say most of them um, because the PlayStation community seems to be very diverse as far as uh, this situation is concerned. So I, again, I won't say all, but I will say a sector of the PlayStation community is gutted um, somewhat by this news. We're going to talk about it. That involves the CMA and Sony in regards to this ABK deal. And then we're going to talk about our final stance on this APK deal as far as reporting news. Uh, shout out to Cold Blood Sensei. Cold Blood, thank you, my good brother, for subscribing. As always, you know I love you, brother. Some we 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 are here for some turbulent times, man. We are here for some turbulent times. Since y'all decided I can't leave my brother. <laughs> Even for oh, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? We in for some turbulent times gaming wise. I'm gonna break it down for everybody. Um, and then secondly, uh, we're gonna talk about this whole Redfall situation, man. This whole Redfall thing is very, very comical to me. Um, and it's being taken out of context. But unfortunately, um, CMA after its ruling or its, its updated provisionals today doesn't even consider the whole Bethesda thing an, an issue. And I find that amazing based upon what the revelations of yesterday. But then I kind of, I don't, I won't say blame it, but I kind of pinpoint that to the flaws in Sony's argument. We're going to get to that. Um, and then Lastly, after we talk about CMA and we talk about Redfall, um, we're going to talk about Sony being the number one publisher. That's right. The number one publisher in the world. Hence why all this is, is, is happening. You know what I'm saying? But shout out to everybody that's joining us right now. My PlayStation Nation, if you need a shoulder to cry on, <laughs> for those of you that are upset about this, if you need a shoulder to lean on, um, I don't think here's what I'm going to say about this news. Um, off the bat, I'm going to say that I, the news isn't great. It isn't great news. I mean, the CMA seemed to be Sony's, uh, best anchor. Um, even more so than the FTC. I think the FTC is just politically motivated to go after large companies. And that's what these entities do from, Appointment to appointment. This is nothing new. I mean, you hear people say, this is a politically motivated. It always is. That's why whoever you put in the office, that matters depending upon the political sway that you want. To sit there and think that these people are fully impartial, you're absurd. You, 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 don't, you don't understand how politics works. Um, so these uh, appointees have their motivations and they will do what they do. And I think the FTC is more, no, they're not even, they don't even care about Sony. They don't care about gaming. I think what FTC cares about is that there's a big deal coming um, and they want to set a precedent um, as far as how big deals are addressed. Uh, shout out to Ron Slusher in the house. Ron says, Redfall better be the greatest game ever made. <laughs> uh, Cold Blood Sensei says, uh, 
He says, congratulations to Activision. You're one step in the game, ma'am. Yeah, this is going to be some interesting stuff. Some very interesting stuff. Um, so let's talk about it. Let's get right into it. Let's talk about it. So for those of you that are not aware, and why can't I get rid of this? Here we go. Let's bring it up on the screen. You know how we do. Let me show you something. This is, uh, oh, that's not it. That's an old tweet from Porter Rock. Uh, here, uh, that's not it either. Here it goes. I put out an op-ed today. Um, the op-ed was actually supposed to go out yesterday, but I got sidetracked and some things happened and I couldn't get it out yesterday. So it went out today. And in the op-ed, I talk about this whole deal in, in totality, the Activision Blizzard deal, why gamers don't understand it. Um, because we're hearing things like Sony is pathetic. Uh, you know, Sony is is no, you know, they, they have no business doing this. And even though you had the EU and the CMA, but basically say, you know what, after our findings, after remedies have been set and after um, we've talked to Microsoft and both entities, we now feel differently than what Sony feels. Even though that's the place that they're at now, you can't feasibly argue that Sony didn't have a case because this the deal as it's proposed right now is not the way that Microsoft had planned to propose the deal. They, I feel like Microsoft has made way more concessions than they wanted to, particularly with like Nvidia, and they might have to make some uh, some additional concessions. And all these things were brought up about mainly from the dispute by Sony. Now, they may not agree with them on the console case, um, EU and CMA, but there's still the cloud component that's being brought up. And I think that that was brought, wasn't that originally brought up by Sony as well? I don't know who originally brought that up. But that could have been a bug dropped in their ear from Sony. So to say that Sony didn't have arguments, you would then have to assume that the deal is going through exactly as Microsoft originally planned. No. When you listen to analysts and, and, and other groups, these 10 year deals, you know, they wanted to strike them with you know, uh, uh, Steam and, and Nintendo, you know, who cares? And then they'll do, and they offered it to PlayStation as well for grandstanding purposes, even though, um, as PlayStation has indicated, the deals are not, they're, 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 they're unacceptable. They're, they're inaccurate. I mean, they're, um, not inaccurate. Uh, they're, they're unacceptable. I can't remember the exact term that they used. So this does not look like the deal in the shape that Microsoft originally wanted. So even though ultimately in the long run, it's starting to turn away from, from what Sony wants. They did have feasible arguments. They did have fathomable arguments rather. It hold it to process. It caused, you know, eyes to be dotted and T's to be crossed. And it, prompted for more important scrutiny to be addressed to this. If I were to run up to the CMA and say, I don't think this deal should go through because Phil Spencer's butt stinks. That's a ridiculous argument. The CMA is going to look at me and I could come with lawyers and all types of stuff, right? To say, yeah, Bill's Phil's butt stinks. And we, what we feel is going to happen is the aroma is going to go into every single physical copy of games. People is going to people are going to end up smelling his ass every time they buy a physical game. This is going to harm. This is going to harm the the, the the business sector. I can make that my argument all all you want, all I want. Guess what's going to happen? It's going to get ignored. It's going to get tossed out because that's ridiculous. Sony didn't pre present ridiculous arguments, even even though the arguments at the end may not fall in their favor. They got to go one way or another. Doesn't make them ridiculous. 
This prolonged the deal, caused more scrutiny over the deal, and it also likely from them, if they're the ones that dropped the dime, set off another uh, subsection of concerns in regards to the cloud. And therefore, Microsoft in turn had to give away uh, the milk without selling the cow. Like NVIDIA really came through. They really came through like some fat cats on this deal. Regardless if the deal goes through, they get Microsoft games like Starfield and such on their platform. And it's going to look and play better there for sure. So they get to tout that. And and in all likelihood, these games will be available via Steam, right? And if they're available via Steam, what I can do as a GFN holder is I'm paying my subscription to GFN. I am buying my Xbox games at an a la carte level. I can then look at a game like Starfield or whatever. And if I don't like it, say it's trash. And as long as I'm within the Steam return policy period, which I think is two hours, I can return the game. So I can pretty much try, do a quick video on all these games. It's kind of like what people used to do on Stadia. I remember when people would do like videos on Stadia or no, no, no. We, we had a guy um, by the name of... Um, Oh, I forget his name. Gosh, and I'm, I'm not trying to be a jackass. Um, there was a guy that did all of our resolution reviews over there in Stadia. And he didn't want to keep or play all these games. So what he would do is buy them, get the resolution and stuff like that. Get, the, you know, get those numbers and then return them. So if I want to sit there and make anti Xbox content or just talk about the games and not and not commit financially to them, I can via nvidia geforce now they, they and but here's the thing i have to commit to nvidia geforce now i have to i gotta pay that subscription i can use the free tier but the free tier puts me in a in a queue and all that junky stuff so i get to only commit to nvidia geforce now try out xbox games and not have to commit to them financially they GFN made out like a fat rat with this deal. So this does not look like the same deal that Microsoft and might I add that Microsoft might have to make the one concession that they really didn't want to make. What is that concession? I feel at the at the heart of this And people may laugh, but I just explained to some people that laughed at me before when I told them, these are Xbox people too. This just proves how ignorant the Xbox wing is, but they they, they just wood buff and they bootlick feel anything Phil Spencer. They talk so much cloud, 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 and know nothing about the cloud. So as these arguments and stuff are going on in the community. I said, hey, I think the cloud is going to be an issue here because of X, Y, Z. I'm, I'm seeing it starting to brew up. The cloud is going to be a major component and how this is rated. And you know what? I will give myself my own flowers. You got to do that in this business because people are stupid. They're idiotic. They don't pay attention to shit. And when you do, they try to snatch it from you and say, oh, yeah, well, well this is what's going on or whatever. And I don't mind as long as the information gets facilitated. But then when people start questioning your veracity of being able to understand things, then I, you know, then I got to be a jackass, too, and call people out. We were the first, the first, the first people to proclaim that cloud was going to be a major component and how these regulatories will look at this deal. The first. So anything that you've heard subsequent in that realm either was cascaded from us or taken from us rather 
or was realized after we had already realized it. So I'm talking to my Xbox friends who are salivating over today's news. They didn't even understand what it meant. They thought that it meant that CMA was in full. <laughs> they thought that it meant that CMA was in full, you know, unison with, with, and, and, they, and, and their part and the deal was done. Like they had approved the deal. And they had to say, no, like read. This does not, they, it, it's a serious step and what they want being Xbox bootlickers, but it's not indicative of them co-signing the deal. Not yet, if ever. Because they still have concerns over the cloud. Because my, my comment to the group was, wow, I'm surprised, man. That they came, they would, you know, because the way it was phrased to me was it was putting her all, you know, look at this now, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's been, CMA has approved the deal, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, oh, wow, I, I wasn't expecting that this soon. I mean, it wasn't, it wouldn't surprise me if by April 29th, if that's what they would have said. I, it did surprise me though that they would concede that part of it so soon. And to have the belief system at the time that they approved the deal, which was wrong, because that, that's the way it was being messaged when, this, when I was talking with this group, I said, damn, I'm, I start scratching my head. I said, wow, they, they even approved the cloud component? They approved the cloud component without Amazon having to strike a deal? Like, I find that very funny. Like, I think that's the last part. So, you know, I said, something kicked in and said, MM2K, you can't rely on them. They're bootlickers. You got to go look for the information yourself. So I go went, went and looked for the information myself. And I found a, a, a Verge article that said specifically that no, they've only approved or they've only cited that they no longer agree with Sony that this is going to cause a disruption in the console field, but they still have concerns in the cloud. You said they'll, they'll have a, I guess, a final decision or their next decision is going to be April. So I was like, ah, now that makes sense. I, I mean, again, still surprised that they came to that conclusion about console this soon. I didn't expect that for another month, but now now it makes sense. Because I, because honestly, I think the writing was on the wall that CMA was going to start siding with the EU as far as this was concerned on the console side. I, again, just surprised me that that domino fell this soon. But just, for those of you that don't understand, this doesn't mean that the deal, that CMA has approved the deal. Matter of fact, I think it's important. Let me not just assume that you all know that. Uh, let me put it up here for you to see because, um, you know, unfortunately in this uh, community, uh, it's it's all about zealotry. It's not about presenting facts to you. Like I can sit here and say, I don't want this deal to go through, but then still present to you facts to, that may show the deal is likely going to go through. You know what I'm saying? So you're informed and you know what to do in case there has to be a next step thought process. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so let's do this. Excuse me. Um, I got to find where I put that. Hold on. Uh, let me, let me, let me go. It's probably my notification bells. All right, here we go. So let's put that up here. So you guys and gals can see it. Um, this is a tweet that I sent to somebody. Um, quoting the Verge article. It says the CMA still has, it says, CMA softens concerns over Microsoft Activision Blizzard deal. The UK's Competition and Markets Authority has provisionally concluded that Microsoft's proposed Activision Blizzard deal will not result in a substantial lessening of competition in the console gaming services because the cost 
to Microsoft for withholding Call of Duty would outweigh gains from taking such action. The CMA still has concerns around the cloud gaming market, but a key issue over Call of Duty has now been addressed. So they still have issues in the cloud. I am guessing, I am making an educated guess, and, I, and I've been right so far in this, that this stems over Amazon Luna. I think what's happened is that CMA caught wind of things that I've caught wind of where this, this deal is being orchestrated. Yes, there's a mobile component that Microsoft wants to, wants to kickstart, yank from the Apple and Google stores and kickstart that way. But there's also a cloud component that Google and Amazon was presenting a challenge to Microsoft in the cloud. Microsoft was very concerned about that. And what Microsoft's strategy was, was, hey, because first they tried, remember they tried to create Mixer and Mixer was going to combat. The fact that all three of the Microsoft, Amazon and Google would all be in the game space. And Microsoft looked at it at first and said, well, look, they have an advantage over us because they have a streaming platform and all they got to do is connect their gaming portion to the streaming platform and they're going to blow us out of the water. So that's when Microsoft tried to create Mixer or, or that's when they bought Mixer and tried to integrate Mixer and that didn't work out for them. So they let it go. They then decided, they said, well, hell, let's use this money instead. Let's just start buying shit up. Let's start buying up third party um, publishers that are going to be vital for Amazon and Google to have if they want to get a stranglehold in this in this market. The first one was Bethesda. Bethesda was key because Bethesda had technology that was going that that they were really working on with Google Stadia. I, for, I it was called Orion. They were working on with XCloud and Google Stadia, but primarily Google Stadia. They were working with them to create this soft um, this, this back-end software that was really going to increase the performance of cloud gaming and that was essential because as um the av um the, the, the av1 codec that's really going to blow cloud gaming into the stratosphere when it comes to performance is on its way so when you combine the AV1 codec and the codecs are really the biggest part in all this, your, your the ability of your platform to operate with these codecs and see what they can do. Um, right now, well, Stadia had like one of the best codecs, which was VP9, but what uh, GeForce did is they created technology that was able to enhance an even lesser codec. Um, which I think was H.264. I can't, I can't, I don't know if it was 264 or 265. A lesser performing and uh, less efficient, it, it was as far as bandwidth codec, they were able to get a better performance out of because of the new SuperPod technology. I don't want to get too deep into the cloud stuff, especially my Microsoft people who are listening, who should know this shit because they the cloud 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 and they don't know shit that's that's the, the thing that's irritating more than these deals is how brash and bold they are and they don't know shit they're so freaking ignorant and as a gamer even if i didn't have a platform that i that i selected and i did content for or whatever even if i didn't have that just the sheer ignorance of the xbox gamer irritates the hell out of me the shit that you're capping and bragging for, you don't have any idea how it works. So back to the conversation about the cloud. Um, Microsoft did this equal parts, I believe, um, mobile, but then equal parts, hey, we want to stifle Amazon and Google from wanting to even get into this space. Google Google took the bait. They clutched over and grabbed their heart like Fred Sanford. Oh, I think I'm coming, Edith. <laughs> they took the bait just like that. They, they were easy pickings. Um, Amazon, not so much. 
And I'm pretty confident that CMA has gotten wind of Microsoft's intent with that in the cloud because that is anti-competitive. We're gonna snatch everything from you so you can't compete. So what Microsoft has done is they've made deals with this one and they even made deals with Boosteroid. Now the odd thing about Google, which Google done sold out the cause, because number one, they canceled Stadia way too early. And B, they went with this approach that they're going to be the backend provider um, for companies like U- Ubiquitous, uh, Ubiquitous or whatever. The same cloud streaming company that provides games to Nintendo, Switch. So what Google and NVIDIA essentially did is they said, look, we got to get our interest in on this deal. So Google and NVIDIA together went to the CMA and said, we got issues with this now. And now, and then not force Microsoft to first strike a deal with NVIDIA. And then I guess they probably were gritting their teeth about striking a deal with Ubiquitous because Ubiquitous is going to help out Google. And Google is a frontline competitor where NVIDIA isn't. And I'm talking about just, glo- just globally as companies. I'm talking about Google versus Microsoft. There is no Microsoft versus NVIDIA. But being that they were fronting competitors, Microsoft really didn't want to help them at all. But now they're helping them because the company that Google is really standing behind right now, as far as cloud streaming, game streaming is concerned, after they've closed down Stadia, is this ubiquitous. And I know I'm butchering their name, but F it. So they they so again, Microsoft has already had to make concessions that they didn't want to because they went out there they want to squeeze out amazon and google from the gaming market period they want to squeeze them out as much as they can because they're competitors they're competitors on the market they're frontline competitors so now google got what they want so it's like damn like they they, they kind of won but then they lost they won in shutting stadia down so google didn't stick with that and really capitalize on the revenue they could have made by being in the business, true. But Google now, in their new venture, can really up the the footprint of their their cloud service, which the bigger parent company, Microsoft, is gonna be concerned with. But they had to concede because Google came in here in the thief of the night with NVIDIA and got their piece of the pie. The last one standing is Amazon. And Amazon just expanded. They expanded to Germany, Canada, um, and the UK. So now Amazon Luna is bigger and better than it's ever been. And I'm telling you, next to to Stadia, Amazon provides the best 1080p gaming to me. I love GFN Ultimate is my favorite way to play video games, period. And I'm sorry, PlayStation Nation. I love, but my favorite games are PlayStation games. Period. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, they they revolutionize the market. But my favorite way to play is via NVIDIA GeForce Now, particularly in the cloud. You know what I'm saying? Um, that being said, Amazon Luna in the cloud as far as 1080p gaming, like if you ain't got a 4K, there's a lot of people that don't have 4K screens or a lot of people that just want a game at 1080p and they just get in, in a game on the go. Um, you, you, Amazon is a great platform to do so. Where they kind of fall short is A, not having 4K, but B, the, 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 the library. Their subscription service like Game Pass, their library isn't the greatest. Um, Their library is okay, but the thing that really, quote unquote, bring your own games to, meaning if you bought the game on PC, you can now utilize the cloud service to play them like in the video GeForce Now, and not would have just broken wide open in cloud gaming, but uh, Google bowed out, boo to them. Uh, thank goodness Luna didn't. So Luna, can Amazon can approach this deal and say, look, 
Microsoft, we know the grimy shit that you're up to. You, we know you was trying to squeeze us out. And maybe before you could argue, well, we're just taking incremental steps and we're only in the in the United States. I, I'm baby. Now we in UK. Now we in Germany. Now we in Canada. Where's our game? Where's our game? Uh, our Game Pass channel, or you uh, you guarantee us a ten year deal where all of your games will be playable via our bring your own game service. That Microsoft definitely does not want to do, but if the CMA is doing their job, that is one that they're going to hold them to. If the CMA is adept as they need to be and they're doing their job, and if I'm Sony, I'm still calling them up. Hey, look, even though you don't agree with us on the console side, let me drop another dime on you. You know what I'm saying? Because Sony's job is just to make sure this deal doesn't go through for the sake of their investors and their business. So I'm dropping dimes all over the place. I'm telling, I'm selling, even if it's about packing tape. (laughs) We feel like Microsoft is illegally acquiring their packing tape. What's that got to do with you, Sony? You got nothing to do with us, but it's a crime happening, CMA. Get up on it. Way, with your deal with ubiquitous. I know I'm butchering that. Somebody gonna get on my ass for that. Uh oh. Hold on one second. It seems like that we're having difficulty here. Okay, we still live. I think we're. I think we're live again. Was we cutting out? Can somebody let me know in the chat? Were we cutting out? Is that what was going on? We we keep cutting out. Somebody let me know in the chat. I'm gonna check. Let me check something too. Um. No, I, I can't check it right now. It looks like that. It looks like we kept cutting out in the chat. Um, I don't. I don't have any messages here. Let me. Let me see something real quick, y'all. Uh, because I keep saying this. Welcome to chat. Welcome to chat. That's always a sure sign that we keep. We keep going in now. If I see somebody's watching now, um, if it, cold blood if, or anybody, can, are we going in and out? Is the stream going in and out? Let me see something here. I want to see if the stream is going in and out. No. Okay. Yeah. It, no, it is. It is. It's going in and out. What the hell is going on? Oh, this is wind. I got to call the cable company to get them over here. I deeply apologize. Now I got to merge all those together. Oh, that's going to (laughs) suck. I hate when that happens because then I got to merge all those together. Um, Yeah, sorry about that, y'all. We keep going in and out. But in cold blood, I see what you're saying. You're saying cloud is irrelevant. That's why uh, the deal goes through. No. Um, How can I say this? You, you got to understand the purpose of these regulatories. The regulatories do not look at this as what's the hottest thing happening now. Like they're not on Twitter. They're not watching this show. They should be, but they're, they're not, they're, they don't do, they're not gamers. So they're not caught into the fandom that we are, the, the instantaneous, you know, every, the first five minutes of now fandom that we are. Their job is to to look and see, and trust me, I wouldn't lie to you, brother. I wouldn't lie to you about anything gaming related. I, this is this is business management 101. I have a degree in business management. I have a degree in accounting. I'm telling you, and, I, and I've done business management, accounting, and so much more for a Fortune 500 company. I'm telling you that what the regulatories are supposed to do is they are supposed to look at deals and see if the deals have the potential 
of causing monopolistic behavior now or in the future. That's why if you look at what's on the screen, it says Microsoft's Activision deal will not result in a substantial lessening in competition. When they say the word result, they mean now or in the future. It could be years from now. Their job is to make sure they don't set the precedent for that. Right? And they're supposed to not, they, are they always spot on? Or success? No. But here's the thing. Cloud gaming doesn't have to be relevant now for it to be an issue that they use to block this deal. Why? Because analysts are saying that cloud gaming is going to be significant in the future. You can disagree with them all you want, but the analysts have more credence to what the CMA or any of these regulatory bodies are going to listen to than anybody. And because of that, that's actually a, 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 a plus if you don't want this deal to go through. Why I say that is because they're looking at cloud gaming. That's why cloud gaming is still the last man standing. If cloud gaming was irrelevant, they would have been knocked that out of the way. It's actually the, the, the last man standing, AKA the more potent concern for a regulatory, not a gamer, a regulatory. It's more concern for them because they're saying when cloud gaming does get big 10 years from now, did we give Microsoft the power to already bury its competition unfairly? That's what they're looking at. And I'm telling you, word got to little old me, MM2K, that's yelling and screaming through his pop filter and, and, and trying to steal his wife's credit card every Tuesday to buy games. If, if word got to little old me that the reason why Microsoft is doing these deals is one equal part the mobile the another equal part to smother out google and amazon i'm pretty sure it got to cma and if it got to cma cma is then going to look and say okay we've seen that you give deals to nvidia we've seen that you give deals to this one we've seen that you give deals to that one you gotta now give a deal to amazon luna and that's what microsoft really doesn't want because Microsoft wants to smother them out. If they got to give a deal to Amazon Luna, that completely disrupts their plans. And if it disrupts their plans, it disrupts them going further with the plans. Yes, they'll have King. Yes, they'll have Call of Duty. But then they're going to have to stop. Particularly because part of the argument that's helping them out is that, oh, we can't compete. We're so far behind revenue wise, everything. Well, if this deal goes through, they are gonna be right behind Sony. They're still gonna be behind Sony, but they are gonna be right behind Sony a couple billion. And the more pressure there would be for them to do this again, because now they are competing. Now they're right behind Sony. And again, if there's more pressure on them than there would be with this deal, that means they got to make more concessions. That means that they're actually doing Amazon Luna's job for them and bringing them more games. So that's the precedent we want. That's the true precedent that we want to see that is going to be um, outlined here. The, the savior in all this, if you're someone like me who doesn't want this deal to go through, the true number one thing is if Amazon Luna is offered a deal. And I think what Luna did is I think Luna may have reached out. It's, it's, kind, of, it's kind of a kawinky dink that Amazon Luna, while all this is happening, all of a sudden they choose now to expand. Hmm. It could be a coincidence, but kind of strange to me. But again, if Microsoft has to give Amazon and Luna a deal in order for this to go through, fine. I think we can live with that. This deal going through because I'm not so much worried about the content going to Microsoft. I'm worried about the precedent that it sends. That it sends. But if in order to get these deals to pass, 
Microsoft then has to deliver games to Amazon Luna as well. They're doing Amazon Luna's bidding. And that's what that's exactly what they don't want to do. And 10 years of g- absorbing these companies and giving the games to Luna, absorbing these companies and giving these games to Luna. Luna has an effective game studios. They've seen some success with New World, but more likely Lost Ark. 10 years is more than enough time for Luna to get their shit together with them with, with their studios. And then now say, okay, well, you're going to take this from us. We don't need you anymore. We've been working on the side, making our own great games. That'll be better than yours. And we've been talking to some people. But thank you for supplying us with the top-notch games in the interim. Guess what? Now we got Twitch. You ain't got Mixer no more, sucker. You know what I'm saying? And guess what? Ninja now can take our version of whatever game that's better than anything in your catalog that we've made with our studios. And we're going to give Ninja the ability to every day gift the game to five people on Amazon Luna and then play the game and pull people into his game. You guys can't do that because guess what? You don't have a, you don't have a video streaming platform. Nah, 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 boo, boo. That is not what Microsoft wants. So the final stop to this, and I know people are going to clip this and be like, oh, these sad ponies. Oh, they're pathetic. Oh. Look, I'm a gamer that cares about gaming. I don't want Microsoft. I don't want this precedent to be rewarded. They can have Call of Duty. They can have, they can have those games. That's fine. That's fine. As long as there is a stopgap to keep this from going on, that stopgap is Amazon Luna. I'm telling you, it may sound crazy. I get that a lot of you don't understand the inner workings of all this. Y'all, y'all laughed when I've said at first, but this is all you got to remember. Y'all laughed when I said that cloud gaming was going to be a major component in whether the regulatories pass this deal or not. Who is the last man standing even when they're shutting down Sony's arguments? It's cloud gaming. I know what I'm talking about. I can recognize the patterns and I can do so because I have familiarity with regulatories. Again, I don't deal with them just in the courtroom. I deal with them every day. When people got complaints, the regulatories are calling me. They're calling us. What about this? What about that? I got to give accounts and do all that. I, I hate dealing with them because it, it feels like the ultimate shakedown. But over the years of having to deal with them, I get what needs to be said and what needs to be done. And more importantly, how they think. So you got to get out of your own prism and instead of thinking, well, this is what I think about cloud gaming. It doesn't matter. The regulatories still seem to be concerned about cloud gaming, about the competition factor in cloud gaming and how this will affect it in the long term. And while they think that way, that's good for any of us that doesn't want this deal to go through. The thing that will really make it worthwhile, all this means nothing as far as talking about cloud gaming being involved. All this means nothing if Amazon Luna does not have to be supplied. If Luna doesn't have to be supplied here, then then we got some shit to talk about. <laughs> then we got some shit to be crying over if, if Amazon, you know what I'm saying? Because then nothing's going to stop PlayStation. I mean, no, nothing's going to stop Microsoft from disrupting the norm. Let me talk about the norm. All right. Um, let's see here. He says, uh, let me, let me go to my brother, cold blood sensei. Yeah, I know it's, it's, it's hella broken. I apologize for that. Y'all it, it's my internet. There's when I, I just saw a news thing where it was like, there's wind. Um, and, but I can't pull you. I can read your comments though. Cold blood. It says I'm back. Your stream is hella broken. Michael Pactor says Sony would die without game pass. And what exactly and what happened exactly the opposite? No, no, Mike Michael Pactor is a crackpot, dude. 
Like, I don't even, like, I don't even fucking know. Excuse my French. I don't even know. I don't know where this dude comes from. Like, Michael Pactor's a crackpot. Don't, don't listen to him, man. Do not listen to Michael Pactor. Like, I, I, he can't be as idiotic as he states on TV and shit. He can't be that dumb. Like, I think it's a show. Because people have checked out his pedigree and he seems to be who he says he is who he works for and I think he says a lot of the stuff that he says for shock value yeah no My, Michael Pactor I, I'll, I'll put this Michael Pactor's rhetoric is crackpot do not no 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 do not take him as a pure analyst in, in, in these regards no don't listen to him. I think, again, I think he's doing what he's doing for shock value. Uh, yeah. So when I say analysts, nah, don't, 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 don't even, don't even, uh, go by him, dude. Uh, cold blood says don't trust these analysts ever. Nah, no, the analysts, the, the analysts, um, I'm not going to say don't, I'm not going to say listen to everything that they say because a lot of their shit is derived off of formulas and things like that. And, and it's a guessing game. And no analyst anywhere is a no analyst anywhere is a fortune teller. But the analysts usually are spot on about stuff. Not not the crackpot clickbaity analysts. The analysts, so they, they get it to a degree, and they're a lot better now with this stuff because I think they're, they they've had to become. Let me let me give you an example, Cold Blood. I I have nothing to do with gaming, and the analysts slash uh, what do you call it? Sampling work that I do now. Um, so it has nothing to do with games nothing to do with gaming but every year um we are tasked with because of the level that i'm at we are tasked with going doing our evaluations coming up with new business sectors that we think our cso should pursue and not and, and most of them aren't pursued most of them don't materialize rather but they want us in the, they want us in the business because we're a little bit higher up the food chain to and, 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 they, and it's actually called our big business acumen um analysis where it's part of our review where we come up with certain businesses that we feel like that would would fit with our company and so one that I've always done, because I knew it wasn't going to materialize anything, is I've always offered up Microsoft and PlayStation. And so, so PlayStation and Xbox. I've always offered them up and I've always put them in my review. Um and you know, pulled out analyst data that talked about certain things, only because I'm a gamer and that shit was fun to me. And my boss knew it. My boss knew it, but he knew that the way I structured it was good. So it, it met the ends. He knew it wasn't going anywhere. I knew it wasn't going anywhere, but it required me still because I couldn't just make up shit. I had to come up with factual data because I didn't want to put my boss in a peculiar situation. He knows what I'm doing and he's, he's, he's vouching for it. So I got to come up with factual data just in case they do an audit because what they'll do is they'll audit certain reviews and they'll pull them to, to look at what you put in there, right? I mean, there's two ways that it can get escalated. Number one, if your boss escalates it and says, I, I got a good idea here in a review. So let me escalate it up. You know what I'm saying? And you and, and there was a quota too. I, I know I'm getting into the weeds. There was a, so, a quota, quota that each boss had as far as how many managers had to come up with actual feasible things and i never helped with the quota i always made it worse and my boss knew that but he let me do it because he always met his quota you know what i mean 
Um, and, and but I know if if he wasn't meeting his quota and he came to me and he said, "Hey, bro, look, this year I need you to, to to take this shit seriously." I'm talking no goddamn games. <laughs> like you need to go look and find a legitimate business that we can operate with that's feasible. That we, you know what I'm saying? Um, but because of all that, I actually look at the analyst data, and I start and then um, I started I created a spreadsheet. Um, where I would put all the information that happened with games and I compared them to what the analysts were doing. I was running them through my the numbers, through my databases. And the analysts were like amazingly like 5% over and under. They became so more after 2013. I think before 2013, Cold Blood, they were way off. But after 2013, they really started getting on their game. Um, so what I will say is that the analyst, you don't believe any and everything in analysts. I've heard analysts individually say stupid stuff. You don't go by an individual analyst. You look at the whole field and see what the analysts are saying in collective. And when you average out everything, the, the percentage points and stuff that the analysts say in collective, I have found when I was doing that as part of my analysis, um, or as part of part of my review, that they were like five, only five points over or under. That's 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 incredible. That's incredible for something as volatile as gaming. But using Michael Pactor, he's a crackpot. No, don't go by him, man. Michael Pactor is a crackpot. He says I'm still laughing. Um, what do you say? I said I'm still laughing until the day. Oh, come on, pop up. I'm still laughing until the day cloud actually becomes something usable with all the greatness from PlayStation and Nintendo. Um, well, NVIDIA GeForce now has already proven itself and, and look, the technology is there. It's just that the effort has to be there, but GeForce now has taken the effort out of the technology. What they've done is ingenious. Um, the overall offering, the best overall offering as far as gaming is concerned is the PlayStation 5 as far as I'm concerned. That's why I'm even doing a show like this. I wouldn't even I wouldn't even be doing a show like this um, if it wasn't. Like, I'm not doing a show like this for views and for clicks. I, I, definitely not, because if I was, I know better than to say, excuse me, PlayStation. I mean, the GF, GFN is the, it provides the best performance anywhere. PlayStation gamers don't want to hear that, but I'm always going to tell the truth. And I know it's going to come at the cost of views and clicks, but whatever. But the purpose of the show is to show my appreciation for PlayStation. Show that I know that they are the best place to oh, all around to play and absorb and, 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 and interact with games. And they're the brightest star for gaming's future. But look, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna front. If I had an option <laughs> to play PlayStation games on a PS5 or NVIDIA GeForce Now, I, I'm not even going to finish that sentence. We'll just leave that alone. And that was going to become a possibility because remember, they put God of War. They were starting to put their PC games um, on NVIDIA GeForce Now, and then they stopped. But they're available via Boosteroid. And Boosteroid actually partners with nvidia geforce now they use their technology it's just that nvidia makes sure that they utilize it first and then they'll cascade it on to anybody that's licensing their technology so i mean you can in a roundabout way get nvidia geforce now technology and play playstation games because booster Roy gets everything like you can play spider-man you can play every single playstation pc game on booster Roy. i think the only one you can't play is returnal and I could be wrong about that. I think you can play, you can play Marvel, Spider-Man. You can play all of them. God of War, everything. So cloud gaming does have its use, but again, it's just, it's just not, it's just not main, it's just not accepted on the mainstream yet. But we as gamers, now we're now we're at a crossroads, dude. We're at a crossroads where we can't be ignorant to this stuff anymore. You ain't gotta like cloud gaming, you ain't never gotta touch it, but you better understand it and understand how now if you don't want this deal to go through you're at the beck and call of amazon luna because what microsoft does not want to do 
is fast track games to Amazon Luna. And if they if this deal goes through and it only goes through because they had to make a deal with Amazon Luna, then gaming is saved. <laughs> because here's what I here's what I think. Um, let me put this tweet up. This was a tweet put by somebody and they said once again excited for the precedent that ABK deal will set essentially opens the door for Microsoft to buy anyone they want and there's no competition that can afford acquisitions of that size. And 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 that's a thousand percent true. This was my response to that. I said I said agreed. If allowed to continue, this totally uproots the biz for gamers who want quality over quantity. Uh, why? Because one, quality exclusives made to sell your box. That's that's why Sony makes the quality ex exclusives. They told you they experience up to a 70% failure rate as far as every 10 exclusives they put out. For every 10 exclusives they put out, only 30, maybe 40% of those exclusives make the money back or you know, are profitable. 60 to 70% of them are not profitable. Doesn't mean that they're not great games. It just means they're not profitable. So because they're not profitable, what ends up happening is that's still, that, that, that creates a sense of urgency where Sony still, they gotta still try to make the best games. and because of their abilities even though six or seven may fail out of the ten three will make it and three will make it so damn well that they cover the costs of all ten so there's that risk that's subsided but then you still got to get the you get the box in the home and they're, and they're losing money on the box the first two years but the winner of the first two years determines who's going to win the generation so that's why I said, even if Microsoft gets this deal, the generation is won by Sony. They're too far ahead and it's too far long. And this deal, as big as this deal is, it, the deal's not, is not big enough to push them over the edge. They would have had to, unless they would have made Call of Duty exclusive. If they would have made Call of Duty exclusive, then we're, then we're okay. However, and I don't think Microsoft cares now that they're, now they're closer to Sony and revenue. And now they have an ability to squeeze out some of the biggest games from other platforms after 10 years. And they're fine with signing 10 year deals because guess what? The technology in the X is an Xbox via X cloud in particular is so bad right now that they feel like that they're going to need another 10 years. They're going to need another 10 years to rebuild their infrastructure or get it to where it needs to be. And cloud gaming ain't going to mean nothing in 10 years until 10 years from now anyway. So why not just make a lot of money owning these two companies? Why not just make a lot of money by owning these two companies? I mean, not owning these, not two, but owning this uh, Activision Blizzard. Let's not, let's just make a bunch of money right like if well really if activision blizzard costs you 70 billion and i didn't even think about this if activision blizzard costs you 70 billion to buy guess how much activision blizzard makes in a year 7 billion Seven times 10 is 70. <laughs> I didn't even realize that. So by the time they made their money back from this deal, then they would be ready to say, nope, you ain't getting this, you ain't getting that. Ah, now it makes sense. So that's another staple why they're doing 10 year deals. They're doing 10 year deals because they realize that the technology that they have to get them to the 3 billion people that's going to be ushered in by the cloud won't be ready for 10 years for one for two it's going to take them 10 years to make their money back anyway so why not just get them have them in their possession and still lease out the stuff still keep it business as usual then 10 years from now we're going to take all these assets that we have 
and we're gonna put we're gonna close them off because now our cloud is gonna be better you know what I'm saying we would have made our money back on them and now we can afford to not do any deals that's why they're signing 10-year deals they're signing 10-year deals because they want to ensure that they get all their money back and I think Activision Blizzard in particular I think Activision Blizzard most of their stuff is going to remain multi-plat I think Bethesda was purchased for the exclusive content to go along with the exclusive content with everybody else but I think they want to make their money back within that 10 years and you don't do so by putting this shit direct on Game Pass, excuse me. And you still are not selling to other people. Nah, you're, you're not going to get that much of a push to PlayStation, from, to, um, to Xbox. Even the CMA studies have shown that only 20% of people at best would leave PlayStation and come over. That, that's not enough. So yeah, I think for Activision Blizzard, it's going to be business as usual for the most part until they recoup all that money back. Then after 10 years, and they're going to start shutting everything down. And that's why. Because now it's like, okay, now we're easy, easy peasy. We got all of our money back from the deal. Now let's utilize the power of these IPs, not off from anywhere else. And we can do it because our cloud is going to be better. You know what I'm saying? It's again, I, I totally get why Microsoft is doing it. But the problem is, is if they're continuously allowed to do this type of stuff, what does it mean for gaming? And that's why I said if Sony and the rest of the platform holders, if they make quality exclusives, even though there's a potential for a 70% failure rate and they finally get that money back from selling multiplats. My question was, if a company with size with a sizable war chest is allowed to buy up number two, the notable multiplats, top-notch multiplats, what's the incentive for part one? What's Sony's incentive? Is Sony still going to endure a 70% failure rate to get boxes in your home if they know that it's not going to materialize too much? I don't think so. Because this is a business after all. It's going gonna, it's gonna to have drastic ramifications if Microsoft is allowed to continue to buy up all the multiplats that make number one in this proposal lucrative. That's why this is a problem. And that is a problem for gamers in general because Sony is like a beacon, a lighthouse on game development. They're showing you what needs to be done as far as quality is concerned. And if that quality gets affected in any negative term, I don't think being able to play Call of Duty even on the cloud is worth it. And that's coming from me, from a cloud gamer. I love what the cloud presents with gaming, but it don't matter the delivery system if the games aren't stellar. And just because you have new technology abroad doesn't mean that the games are going to necessarily be stellar. People still have to have imagination. People, there still has to be good management and putting good ideas together. Just because you can put a thousand players on the screen, that doesn't make it necessarily fun. Someone has to think about how to implement that in a fun way. So there still has to be talent behind it. The technology alone doesn't make games good. So at the core, regardless of what the technology is, from generation to generation, we need good developers and, and um, purveyors of games. So yes, cloud gaming is my number one way to play. But if this is going to affect the quality standards within the gaming industry, I don't give a shit if Call of Duty comes to the cloud. I don't care. I want to know that there's still going to be a lighthouse, a beacon for great quality games. And I'm sorry, Mike, this, this uh, regime does not have a pedigree for that. Give me one second.
They don't have a pedigree for that. So I don't care about them right now. I don't trust it in their hands. So those are my thoughts about the whole Activision Blizzard deal. Like it or not, Cold Blood, I'm sorry, bro. He says, <laughs> oh, shit. I got, I got to put this comment up. This is funny as hell. He said, Microsoft will awaken the serial killer of gaming. <laughs> yeah, it's not. This is not good. This is not good at all. This is not good at all. If you're a true gamer, you're not celebrating this. Like who can, like again, like I said, my favorite way to play is on the cloud. I love NVIDIA GeForce now. The prospect of all these games now coming in NVIDIA GeForce now on its own surface, yeah, would, would make me excited. But the problem is at what cost? That's what that's what puts a damper on it. At what cost? Because really, out of all the platforms, there's only one that's in the lab innovating and trying to come up with with great AAA games. There's only one, and they got a formula that's working. And anything that disrupts that formula is bad for us. And that's where, before I close out on this this topic, that's where I think Sony effed up. Sony effed up because they made their premier focus Call of Duty. I think they should have had a two-prong argument. The two-prong argument should have been, yes, not only is this dangerous because of Call of Duty, but then you guys are setting a precedent what I talk about here. Our, the business, what I would have said is the business of platform holding and console gaming is set off of this precedent. We take humongous risks to create quality exclusives to help sell our platforms. They have even a 70% failure rate. We make our money back on these, on these multi-plats. The, the precedent that you're selling setting is you're setting the precedent that Microsoft gets to buy all the multi-plats because we can't buy them. We're not as big as Microsoft. Microsoft is in a totally different sector from us. So now you're going to allow Microsoft to totally disrupt how gaming works and they're going to disrupt it in a way that only works for them. That's that that's what my argument would have been. It wouldn't have just been Call of Duty. It would have been two pronged. It would have been Call of Duty and it would have been the bigger picture is now you guys are setting up this precedent. They're taking the biggest multiplats away from us. Who's gonna stop them from buying Ubisoft? What's what's gonna stop them from buying Ubisoft next? Well, we wouldn't, we, 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 we wouldn't let them. We need assurances then. We need assurances. That's where Sony fucked up. Excuse my friends. That's where they messed up. They messed up by not having that as their, their staple of their argument. It was good enough to, to trip them up on the rug. It was a good enough banana peel to get them to slip for the moment. But it wasn't, it wasn't systemic. It wasn't a systemic argument. So I hate to tell you, I got to learn more about this, this cloud gaming thing. Now it's vital that you learn about it and you got to understand Amazon, Google, um, you ain't got to play it. You ain't got to like it. You got to understand it. it's all about being empowered with, with, with knowledge, with information. So you know how to move forward as a gamer to help maybe persuade something you, you you we might have enough persuasion to just tip the scales just a little bit in our, to help move things in our favor but amazon luna's the last hope and here's what i'm hoping i'm hoping the people at luna aren't saying uh, we don't need microsoft <laughs> because we haven't seen a complaint from them maybe they just been strategic and silent 
but we ain't seen anything from Amazon Luna. And we hope that they didn't expand this expansion just isn't a coincidence. We hope that they plan to say some child because here's the thing. If Amazon Luna is sitting there saying to themselves, oh, we don't want to partner with, with, with Microsoft. Microsoft has a very effective plan at the stage that it is now as far as smothering you out. Their game is to just buy up the games on your platform that people will run and run to and play. Exclusives are great because they help gravitate gamers to your platform but the thing that keeps them there is the multi-plats that people want to play so it's a two-pong process it's like a bakery you smell the cookies you cross the street you get into the bakery you buy the cookies the smell is the exclusive what's what's this going on over here but the thing that ain't going to keep you in the bakery is the smell eventually somebody has to put a cookie in your hand you taste it you say oh this is this is that good shit so amazon luna i i you know hopefully you're being strategic in your silence but if you believe that you can just you can just weather this storm you are insane you are insane. You need to go and you need to be fighting for this. You definitely need to be fighting to get over here and get your get your piece of the pie. Google slithered in and, and did their little sneaky shit and got their little piece, but it, it it's it's for them. It ain't it ain't really helping us gamers out at all. It, it was totally for them. Amazon, you you got the opportunity. If they gotta if they gotta give concessions to you, that stops them dead in the tracks because then they're gonna have to keep giving concessions to you. If they gotta give concessions to you now. Any future big deals that they have, um, or any substantial ones, they're gonna have to give concessions to you too. So. All right, that's it for the CMA shit. Let's move on. Uh, Redfall. Uh, hey, let me go to the let me go to the video portion too. I got to fix the video portion. I was talking about. Oh, yeah, it's funny. Yeah, I got Redfall on the screen. So uh, the Redfall PS5 version was in development, but was canceled. Um, Xbox tried to do, you know, say, well, we never took anything away from anybody that was entitled. And all. look, that that's bogus. And that's baloney. The fact of the matter is something was on transit to PlayStation. And trust me, you don't go and just make PlayStation games and then call PlayStation like five minutes before the game goes gold and say, hey, look, we did all this development for your platform um, and we want to put this game on there. And they're like, oh, oh, okay, all right. No, it was probably preliminary deals or something set up or whatever in order for them to develop the game. But before certain specifics, like a release date was established, then the, the game got yanked before then. So to say that they didn't take anything away is bogus that they had. I'm not going to play the semantics game with you where I come from. Um, Double speak. Disingenuous comments. Double speak. In lying, all are branches of the tree of deception. And where I come from, they get treated all the same. You're trying to deceive someone. You're trying to tell them that one thing, you're trying to convince them that one thing is going on when it's actually another thing. I don't separate one from the other. The biggest thing is that they're all deceptive. So Microsoft and Phil Spencer have been phrasing this. We haven't taken anything baloney in a way to make it seem like that 
there were really no concrete plans for this game that conceptually they would have been and then had things materialize okay maybe there may have been but there was really nothing there. no arcane said they were developing the game and they were told to cancel it was out of the studio's mouth there's no backtracking from that now a lot of people say well uh, we'll just get a playstation if you, i mean get an xbox if you want to play that's that's not the point because really nobody wants to play this game this game looks like it sucks it looks like it sucks tremendously the thing is is that again along with this cma stuff microsoft is trying to put on this facade that to the humanitarians of gaming we want everybody to game everywhere and that's what we're trying to push we're trying to push away from limits no you don't want people to game everywhere if you wanted people to game everywhere then you wouldn't have had to make freaking concessions when you bought when you were offering to buy call of duty the first thing you would have said was look and we're we're going to be striking deals with everybody because we want to get this wouldn't have been forced out of you Like people got to put their thinking caps on. If Microsoft truly wanted to have people game everywhere, all these concessions that were forced out of them would have never been forced out of them. They would have done them anyway. But it's like Phil said, we do these deals or this deal and when we're talking about Bethesda is for exclusive content for Game Pass. That was their intent. And then they realized they had to make concessions. So then concessions were made after the fact. If you are trying to ensure that all games are playable everywhere, then you would you would do simply that. And you wouldn't wouldn't have to be pushed out of you. In the case of uh, Activision Blizzard, yeah, they were not on a cloud platform. And now you're going to present the opportunity for them to be on a cloud platform. Um, but with Bethesda, they were already in the cloud in multiple ways. And you yank, and you yanked that. You yanked that. You yanked the progress of that. They were already in the cloud and you yanked the progress of that. You did. Not them. You did. So you're not humanitarians of gaming. Just stop it. I get that that's your angle and that's what helps you skate away and kick shit down the, the kick the can down the road as far as you actually presenting good games I, I know that's that's your lifeline is is trying to pretend to be the humanitarians of gaming but just stop it just give it up it's, it's a fucking it's a freaking facade and we know better so that's the point of it no X, uh, playstation gamers don't want this shit this is try it looks it's trash there's nothing entertaining about this game, looking about this game at all. I could be wrong, but I'm going to go with PC Gamer said. They said in their preview of the game, that the game is just dull and boring. And that's what the way it looks to me. And then when, uh, who's that? I keep forgetting their, their giant bomb, I think it was. They said they hope that there's a lot of work that goes into this game because it looks like it needs a lot of polish. There's nothing enticing about this game whatsoever. I don't think PlayStation gamers want this game. I think what PlayStation gamers want is they want this facade of the humanitarians of gaming. They want to eradicate it. They're tired of seeing Phil Spencer win this award, win that award, win this award, win that. For what? The only thing Phil Spencer has done is help Sachi Nadella and I forget his assistant, Anna, um, rework Microsoft to, to make money. That's it. That, that, that's, that, that does nothing for gamers. That does nothing for gamers. What is that doing? What is that doing for for? There's no quality gaming that they presented in a broad way. And again, people may say, "Oh, well, Game Pass." 
Game, but look, d there are, what, 150, maybe 100 million? No, no, there ain't 150. Maybe there's like 70, 80, 90 million Xboxes out there that Game Pass is eligible for. There's only 20 to 30 million people that have Game and And, and let, let's not count the, inlet, the, the countless PCs. There are only... And God, God damn it, let, let me not even count the countless people in the, that play in the cloud that could possibly play in the cloud rather there are only 20 to 30 million game pass subscriptions they're not revolutionizing gaming they're giving ammunition to a bunch of journos to whine and complain that don't want to buy shit anymore to say oh, oh sony put your games in, in the subscription service day one <laughs> no you get what you pay for There's nothing, there's nothing humanitarian about Xbox. Stop letting them skate on this bullshit. Like they're, they're, they've, they're bringing more quality to game. They're not, no, they are not winning anything. As a matter of fact, let's do this. Let's segue with our last story. Hold on. Oh, my thing ain't working. Ain't that a diddly doodly? Let's segue with our last story, which is Sony was Metacritic's highest rated publisher in 2022. Man, don't get the hell out of my face. Um, It shows you right here that as far as 2022, Sony Interactive, their average rating was 85.6. And last year they were second. Paradox Entertainment, Activision Blizzard, Focus, Take Two, Capcom, Sega, and a Porna Interactive, uh, Humble Games, and Devolver Digital. This is like they said there's a full list of 45. Here it goes right here. I wonder what 2021 looked like. Oh, okay. It says Sony was two last night. Oh no, 2021. Where's 2021? It says they were two last year. They were number, yeah, they were number two last year. Number one was Focus Entertainment. Okay. But look at that. Sony's number one. I mean, I don't even see Microsoft up here because, oh, because Microsoft didn't release shit. <laughs> bad precedent that's being set, man. Bad precedent being set. I don't like it. Um. Now, if you're a gamer, I get it. If you're a gamer that likes here, let me let me let me take this this dog shit off of here. Um, if you're a gamer that likes um quantity, you know, you wanna you just wanna play a bunch of games. Alright, then I then then I get it. I get it. Then if you're like, oh Game Pass gives me access to play a bunch of games. Alright, fine. Um, however, if you're a gamer that likes quantity, quality over quantity, um, this is going to be a, this is going to be an issue. Let me see. I got to find video, uh, HNDC videos, real podcasts. Oh, crap. Uh-uh. -oh. That's not longer video, man. Oh crap. Where's my PlayStation? I gotta find my PlayStation videos. You know what? I think I know where they're at. Uh, let's go to there. Go up. Let's go to the commission. Videos used. PlayStation short. There we go. There we 
we go. All right, now we got our PlayStation games back. Okay. Um. Yeah, very, very. Um. Very, very sad state of affairs as it relates to the um the direction that gaming is going into and again the cma deal isn't etched in stone but it's slowly turning in their favor um again like i said i think the last stop would be amazon luna and so now i think the best thing to hope for if you don't want this deal to go through is to hope that amazon luna can be that stopgap because again i i take it back to this tweet right here uh what's this you know the current model that works best i think for gamers that value quality is quality exclusives get made to sell your box if and what happens is you, you take a big financial risk in doing so you even endure a failure rate of 70 percent what is to what is the incentive of uh to take that risk if the games that'll make it fruitful are being bought up and that's microsoft's approach to this they're going they're in, they're doing that i don't think they're doing that to slight sony but but sony is a, is a casualty a casualty in this war I don't think they're looking to help them either, but they're really looking to buy up all these games to so Amazon can say, why bother? We're gonna quit like Google. I'm glad to see that Amazon hasn't quit. And what I would like to see is Amazon fight. Fight for our sake, please. <laughs> because I don't, Google, uh, 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 Microsoft and forget this whole BS about oh, the evil Tencent, Google, and, and Apple. No, Microsoft has not put out quality content in years. In years, quality content, nuanced quality content that pushed the envelope of gaming is what made Microsoft powerful, is what, is what gave them power. They've completely diverted from that and, and just become a revenue stream that can semi keep up in the same sector. And they just want to keep up a little bit more. I don't care about Microsoft's bottom line as a gamer. I don't care about Sony's bottom line as a gamer. All I care about is the company that's doing the things that I want them to do. Or are they making enough money to justify them doing it? And if the answer is yes, then fine. Can, I want them to be able to continue to do it and they're not going to be able to do it if Sony if Microsoft is given their way that's going to be a problem all right well that's it for today's episode of PSN PS prep rally let me just read this last comment from uh, my brother Coldblood sensei he says this is very good most i want to see the ish state i want to see the shit state of gaming industry to crash and burn we need a revolution cold blood I, i'm gonna tell you this brother um i don't think you want to see that here's why you don't want to see it um i already seen it crash and burn once before was that 40 years 30 or 40 years ago 30 years ago in the 80s when the Atari thing happened, I was there. I was, was, was a young kid, but heavily embedded in games, and I saw it happen. It wasn't pretty. And the only thing that we could fall back on was the arcades. There are no arcades anymore. If gaming falls apart right now, it's, it's going to be a lot more catastrophic, and, and, and it's not going to rebound the way we, as quick as it did back then. See, there was, there was like a generator, it was a backup plan. The arcades supplemented that and then th that gave enough time for entities like Nintendo to go back to the drawing board and do it right. There is no backup plan here. If gaming becomes saturated with 
shovelware and the innovation is pulled out of it and gamers just like F it we're done that's it that's it they're done the money to support everything that's gaming costs money now so much money now to deliver the AAA experience we need people invested in it. And if that crashes and burns, people aren't just going to say, oh, that was just a bad period. Let's go back to it. No, it, it's a wrap. This time around, it's a wrap. It was easier back then because gaming didn't cost so much to develop. You just had to know what you were doing. Get you get your good group of 10, 15, 20 people, and y'all just know what y'all doing. It ain't like that no more, man. This this is a has to be a well oiled machine in order to get shit going. And, and, and if it if it blows apart, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be like Chernobyl. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You don't want to say, oh fuck that, yeah, let that that nu- this nuclear plant shouldn't be here. Let that shit blow up so we can be done with it. Then come back three weeks later and just just graze the soil a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and rebuild. Nah, I don't work like that, man. This time, if it blows up, it's going to be Chernobyl. It is going to be there. there, there there's no backup plan except indie games. Unless you want to play a whole bunch of indie games. If you want to play Pizzle Fizzle Tizzle Popper, okay. But it's it's gonna die, man. Like die, die. for a long time long time man we don't want that so it's an alley one. <laughs> if, if that's all you want is the indies and the tinky winky games then yeah that that's then yeah I get, then I get it what the fu- hold on what's going on your comment isn't showing up. Okay. This is so weird, man. Let me get, let me, full web. Dude, this is weird. Why aren't you, what happened to? Okay. Like a whole element is missing. Because now I can't see. Um, let's see here. Window capture. You yeah, were about to close out because I want to do a stream of uh speaker. Oh shit. Ain't that something? It freaking got rid of my um Oh yeah, my brow okay, so browser chat, Twitch chat, okay. Why ain't the Twitch Twitch chat working? All right, well we'll we'll get that fixed. <laughs> All right, man, um, we're done. I'm gonna be doing Horizon Forbidden West over on um, the, the MM2K Gaming Channel. Let me put that in the chat. So let's do that. Uh, YouTube.com forward slash at MM2K Gaming. All right, and uh, I think next week I've been contemplating doing some other things, some new things, so stay tuned to that. But with that said, I appreciate everybody for coming through. Thank you so much. Until next time, have a wonderful gaming day. Peace.